This is the Real Housewives of the Kingdom podcast. I'm your host, Caroline Rogers. In this sweet space, you'll hear from women who are like you and some that are not. We will talk about how God is walking with us through the good and the hard on subjects like marriage, homemaking, friendships, ministry, parenting, and seeking God. You will also hear from me sharing what God is doing in my own heart. The enemy of our souls wants us to feel alone, and that couldn't be further from the truth. So if you are like me and need that reminder, join us as we laugh and cry together, giving God the glory through the stories of our lives. Today on the Marriage Habits series, I'm interviewing Angelia, who I have known since she was in the womb herself. She is a Gen Z wife who has been married just over a year. If you were in her age group, beyond her age group, married one week, or married 50 plus years, I really encourage you to listen in. Paul told Timothy to not let anyone look down on him because he was young, but instead to set an example to the believers in word and in action. So listen into the wisdom and marriage habit tips of this sweet 22-year-old who loves Jesus with her whole heart and is pursuing a God-centered marriage. I know her insight will refresh and give you hope and encouragement for marriage, just how God designed it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Real Housewives of the Kingdom. We are in the middle of our Marriage Habits series, and I have a very special guest on today. I guess I always say my guests are special, but they really are. And this one, this particular guest I have known since she's been in the womb. And so I've known her her entire life, and I am really excited to share this interview with Lala Angelia <laughs> Espinoza. Um, and so welcome to the show and uh, tell us a little bit about you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Angelia. Everyone, literally everyone calls me La. <laughs> I have now been married for a year and a half this month. And I'm 22 years old. I'm a licensed esthetician, so I work in skincare. Um, my husband is a mechanic, electrician, all of the above. Jack of all <laughs> trades. Yeah, really. <laughs> Matt of all trades. <laughs> right, literally. And I've had the honor of knowing the Lord my whole life, which has been just such a blessing. I have never had to question my faith or anything, so I'm honestly so thankful to the Lord and my parents for just growing me up in the faith and it's always been my own and I'm just really so thankful for that it's just been such a blessing always having Christ as my savior having that rock foundation that's a little about me well and it's really cool because if you listen to the podcast you have likely heard a, a good portion of Law's family be interviewed so my very first interview was with her aunt uh, Jamie, or as they call her, Mamie. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was my very first episode. She writes and produces my music for the podcast. And so, and performs it, all of the things. And so that's awesome. I interviewed her mom about covenant marriage, Coley. That uh, episode is really good. And I interviewed her grandmother, our crackers about widowhood, which was mm -hmm. a really um, hard, hard one to do, but such a good episode. And then I interviewed her sisters along with my sister for talking about having babies during the pandemic and just raising children in this kind of crazy world that we're living in. So, um, law. So I'm excited to add law to, uh, the list of podcast guests. The whole, the whole gang, the whole gang's here. They're all, they're all here. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We're not blood related, but uh, we we basically we've been family for a lot of years. Yeah. So it's really fun to have Law on, and she will probably call me Ninety or yeah. Nine <laughs> because that's my nickname. Our families are big on nicknames. <laughs> so, sure. all right, well, let's just dive into this marriage habits conversation. Um, I would love for you to talk about what you expected going into marriage and kind of like what shaped that. And if there was anything that was different once you got married. To be honest, I feel like there wasn't a ton of huge surprises for me going into marriage. Me and Matt knew each other so, so well dating where thankfully I feel like we didn't have any huge, like, oh my gosh, that, that is so surprising to me. <laughs> but like, I've always had a good foundation on what marriage is because my parents have always been such a great example and my grandparents. And so I'm always really 
thankful for that. Nothing really like shocked me to my to my core, you know what I mean? <laughs> but going into it, I feel like I I just knew a good way of how you need to interact with each other and be with each other all the time. Did you talk to Matt about all of those things before you got married? Like I know when I started, when we started doing the God's priceless woman, um, Mm -hmm. Bible study. So that's the Bible study that uh, we did with her family and my family starting at age like 14. It just talks about what God expects of us as women and what the Bible says about that as wives and mothers and all of the things. And it's such a beautiful study. And I know when I knew I wanted to marry Kev, I was like, these are the things that the Bible says about marriage. And this is how I want to do it. And this is, Mm -hmm. you know, I kind of talked to him about that. So did you talk to Matt about those things? Yeah. I mean, we did our premarital counseling with Jamie, who's been on the podcast, my aunt. So my uncle and aunt did our premarital counseling. And so they had tons of questions like that and kind of like what we expect, what we would like to implement into our marriage. And so there were lots of conversations like that. And because we were so excited about Mm -hmm. getting married, we talked about married life so often Mm -hmm. where we kind of just kind of set up a good foundation for ourselves of how our lives are going to go, what we kind of want to put into our marriage and get out of our marriage all before we got married, which was really helpful because we already had a foundation of what we kind of wanted our daily lives to look like. So we had lots of conversations going into marriage beforehand of what we wanted and how things should look for us. And that would work with our personalities. That's awesome. And I think that's, that's such a good habit to start because I am, I would guess you continue to have conversations because yeah. we started having those conversations. So, cause I think sometimes communication can be uncomfortable and you have never discussed certain things and then you get married and then you're like, Oh, maybe I won't say anything, but you're thinking it. And I think getting into that habit early of discussing what you're expecting and mm-hmm. what you you know, like you said, what you want to get out of marriage and how you kind of want to walk through it. It's so important. Yeah. What you were kind of saying about how like you don't want to communicate sometimes. I feel like me and Matt, we had to communicate so much during our dating life. Mm -hmm. We're like at this point, like honesty had to be really, really important during our dating season and engaged season. And so now at this point, even like when we first, first got married, it was so easy to communicate because Mm -hmm. it was such a priority. There's no issue communicate. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, of course there's always like issues communicating, but I never am uncomfortable bringing things up. Do you know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. So I was so thankful. We like prioritize that honesty and openness in our dating and engaged season. Cause now it's just like something that comes easy to us is just being super open and honest. Yeah. It's a habit you implemented. Yeah. And I think to the premarital, you know, premarital stuff is so good because I think a lot of people don't like, are like, Oh, I don't need it. And that's why we did the course for it online. And I feel yeah. like it's, you know, so important because you get some tools and just some really good things to think about how to talk about marriage and, you know, all of those things. Or even questions I never would have thought of on my own, like yeah. ever, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, I didn't even think to ask about his past growing up, like how he was raised. Well, and moving forward, that could eventually cause not just communication issue, but there could be a major issue and breakdown in your marriage because of it. If you don't discuss all of those things. Hey Hey guys, guys, it's Kevin and Caroline Rogers. Rogers. As you probably know by now, we love our marriage and are so passionate about giving others the tools they need to truly have a joyful marriage. It breaks our hearts to know the divorce rate, whether you are a Christian or not, is 50%. Yikes. We also know that nobody gets married and hopes to have a divorce. Exactly. This is why we feel God has given us the motivation to equip as many couples as possible before walking down the aisle. On our 20th wedding anniversary, we launched an online premarital course. We share our own experiences as well as what God's Word says about marriage. In it, we go over five cornerstones of a healthy God-honoring marriage and give you tangible tips on how to walk in it. You'll have over five hours of video teaching from us along with downloadable resources to take into your marriage. We have always loved our marriage and want you to love yours too. If you're getting married and would love to have some 
great tools to take into marriage? Join us today for the course. Hey, even if you know anyone who is getting married, be sure to share this info with them. Link to the course is in the show notes or on our website, MarriedRogersNeighborhood.com. While you're busy planning your wedding, don't forget to plan your marriage. Join Join us and and learn learn how to thrive and and not just survive. I was so thankful for that because... Yeah, there, like I said, there was some things that I never would have thought of to ask or honestly things I was avoiding to ask. Like as far as Matt's growing up when he, he, his father left him when he was really young and I almost didn't want to bring anything mm, up like sad. that. I didn't want to like hurt his little heart yeah. or bring something that could possibly just make him unhappy to talk about. But then when they were asked in the premarital counseling, I was like, oh, it was brought up for me and then she <laughs> had no issue talking about it with me. And then now I know really what happened and all that and how his little heart has healed from it. And it was really beneficial. And I never would have thought to ask those things on my own. So I was always so thankful for that. But it was funny with premarital counseling when I would, cause I was working and all that kind of stuff during the time. And I would be like, Oh, I got to leave like five minutes early to make it to my premarital counseling. And then I'd be like, Oh, are you guys okay? <laughs> you guys having issues? <laughs> like, no, it's premarital counseling. It's yeah. to avoid the issue. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you brought that up and saw just the benefit of it because it's. Um, and I'm glad you brought up the perspective of the people around you saying, "Are you already? Oh, are you having problems?" Because I had people. You guys say, okay? I was like, yeah. And I had people say the same thing to me too. I'm like, no, it's just we're like learning how to be married because uh, it's to we've avoid. Never been married before. <laughs> So one of the things that I have heard all the time is people will say the first year of marriage is the hardest year. I heard that when we had been married a year. So I'm curious, have you heard that? And what do you think about that? Yeah, honestly, that is something that is said all the time. And I, even more so from the people who are married, I get asked that question who from like girls who are engaged or wanting to get married and they're asking me kind of like, okay, really tell me how it, (laughs) how it is. And I will say there is like an adjusting period to just living together. I mean, I mean, you're living with a boy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They're messy for the most part. And I feel like you're learning to communicate 24 seven and like with the little things like I'll be waiting for Matt at home. And I'm like, okay, wait, where are you? And he's like, oh, I had to get gas and pick up these things. And it's just little things like that, where you just are constantly communicating and you're learning how to com- communicate those little things. And I would say our first four months, we would make arguments out of little things just because mm-hmm. I think we were testing our patients because we were constantly with each other. And this is what I tell all the girls who ask me is like, even though we had a lot of arguments more than usual in those first few months, the good outweighed the bad mm-hmm. a billion trillion to one. It just got flushed away because it, it's so exciting to be together all the time and to just be in each other's presence 24 seven, not 24 seven because we work, but you know, (laughs) it just was like, and I tell them that I'm like, yeah, there are adjustments that you have to make. And every couple I'm sure is different on what you need to adjust with me and Matt aren't the most patient people. (laughs) (laughs) We're a little impatient. (laughs) And so that's what we really had to work on. And I feel like that was tested the most in the first few months. I wouldn't even say it was a whole year of adjusting or that Mm -hmm. it was a hard year. I would say it was the best year ever because it was, (laughs) we were so excited, so happy to be married and we still are. It's a part of marriage and you have to work through things and you have to learn how to deal with each other's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. a learning year, an adjusting year, wonderful. a learning year. Yeah. That's and so sweet. So, so wonderful and happy too. Well, and I would say too, that I think sometimes when, especially when you first get married and you have that first argument, you feel almost like, no, why are we doing this? I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be fighting what's going on. I don't want to be arguing, disagreeing. Why are we disagreeing? Why don't you agree with me? You know, you kind of feel like, no, wait, no. And, but I think when you look at it, that 
each time you have a disagreement, it's almost like an opportunity to build a muscle for communicating and a muscle for having humility. You're building a muscle, you're building a marriage muscle. And so every time, and if you look at those little disagreements, almost as if they're building your marriage versus I can't believe we disagreed. Cause I think that, you know, the enemy wants you to feel defeated in marriage. And it's so easy because society society says that that's how marriage is. And it's so easy to go, oh yeah, I was so hard the first year. And I love your joy in it. And I love your perspective. And I think that that's going to encourage a lot of people who are newly married or getting married. Um, I think that that is awesome. So I love that. So let's move into specific habits. So what habits have you implemented in your marriage that have been helpful? And was there any habits that you had that you had to change that weren't serving you well? Okay. So I have a whole list and I just want to preface that we're still working on these. We don't do them all a hundred percent of the time or to a hundred percent. Um, and some are really small and probably common sense, but some are just like little things that are important to me, but there's like a lot of little ones. Mm -hmm. (laughs) First thing is I have, we try to make everything a date. Like if we're both free and one of us needs to run an errand, whether it's Target, whether it's Data Brothers, Matt needs to go to AutoZone and Home Depot literally all the time. (laughs) And if I'm free, I want to go with him. And if he's free, he wants to go with me. To me, those things are so special and we still take the time, even though sometimes they're not fun errands or even last week we had to go to a scrap yard to like scrap a car and I was like <laughs> oh my gosh let me come <laughs> and you know we get coffee on the way there and it's just being together we just make it into something special even if it's not a special mm. event you know what I mean yep I think that has been really sweet because sometimes our lives are really busy especially actually right now because we just moved even those little times together to make them special is really important to us even if they're not necessarily special things mm-hmm. you know what I mean I love that perspective because I think that's the thing that people get off from with the mundane things they look yeah. at them as mundane missing the opportunity to go to the hardware store with your husband <laughs> like like there's been times that I've been cleaning the house or something. And Kevin's like, I just have to run to the hardware store. And there's been only a few times where I've been like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stay home. I'm just going to cleaning. And every time I've done that, I am like immediately sad after he drives away. Oh, I'm like, yes. Oh, oh my heart. I'm like, Why didn't I go? <laughs> yes. No, I've done that too. <laughs> okay. Next. I have, if it's possible, we always kind of just wait to eat dinner together. Mm. Even if we're home like at 8 p.m., like one of us is working late. We really try to just take that time together. Just because, I don't know, we love eating. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Time for us. And we normally can't eat breakfast or lunch together on like work days. Sometimes that's leftovers. Sometimes (laughs) it's a bagel. Sometimes it's going out. And sometimes (laughs) it's making dinner. But either way, we just like to take that time to spend together, choose to spend time together over just quickly eating because it's more convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's always a really special time for us where we chat a little more because sometimes if we are home late, we're really tired. And then we just kind of, you know, we'll watch something and we go to bed, you know, Mm -hmm. but when we have our dinner time, it's just nice. I love that one. Um, this is one we're currently working on. We have not been (laughs) successful on this one yet but it's one we just kind of started thinking about we're working on like no phone time like at least an hour a day when like probably like right when we get home it's kind of a little hard in this day and age we're both young we both are we have our little social medias matt is in love with facebook marketplace (laughs) some of my work is on my phone matt has people texting him from work on his phone after hours And so we're trying to at least just have one hour. We just set them aside. I do have like a special ringer for our moms because I'm Mm -hmm. terrified of being gone for that one hour and emergency happens. That's one we're working on. Sometimes we forget that one. That that one's important to me. And we're just trying to work on. I think that's an important one for this generation too, because when I first got married, we didn't, I mean, we had cell phones, but you couldn't really do anything on them. It wasn't like a dilly dally. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, like, I don't have an experience to go, 
oh, when the first year I was married, this is how we did social media, or this is how we handled phones. So I have no place for that. So I think that's important. And that can kind of hopefully inform people who are listening like me in my stage of marriage or my age group that didn't have that before, you know, and now they have it and maybe they've gotten into a bad habit. Yeah. And well, so sure I really did. Love that. <laughs> um, and Matt lived alone for a solid, like three years before I came and moved in once we got married. And so when he got home, he just kind of like the way he decompressed was just like, laying in his bed on his phone. And so it became like a really big habit for him. So that's a habit that wasn't serving us and Mm -hmm. one that we're trying to fix. What are the ways that you're trying to do that? You set a time period where we can be on our phones for this time uh, or no phones in the bedroom or what are your parameters? How are you trying, how are you attempting? And I think that's important too give yourself some grace. Like, you know, that that's an important thing to remember as you're working towards habits to how you worded that. I love that. For me personally, on my phone, I started putting on like time limits for each app. I only needed to do it for two apps that I like felt like I was constantly going on. And Matt did that too. Apple has this thing where you can check and see how much time you're spending per day Mm -hmm. on your phone. (laughs) And so we're each week we're like, okay, we're trying to cut it down. And it's almost like a little bit of a competition where we're like, okay, we need to cut down our little phone times. And sometimes it's hard because Matt uses his maps a lot for, (laughs) for work. So we try to (laughs) calculate that out. It's just little things like that. We haven't I mean, we just kind of started other than like our hour that we make sure they're just like put away away. We have mm-hmm. other than like cutting down actual time. We haven't put in a ton of other little parameters. Yet. We literally just started this one like two weeks ago and then our life's got flipped upside down. We moved and then <laughs> we're restarting. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And I think that like restart is so important. I feel like with so many habits, we want them to do good right away. Like you want to start a habit and be like, yes, let's experience Perfect. the joy of what life. this <laughs> habit brings. And then maybe you miss it or you're like, oh man, we did it again. Or we got back into it again. And sometimes that makes people not try again. And so I think it's important to have that grace as you're moving towards a habit to just know you can fail and then try again. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, this one was important to me, especially because I was like, okay, sometimes our time together is really precious and we don't have a lot of it because we work and all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, okay, when we're free, I know you kind of want your downtime, but let's just take our downtime together rather than on our little phones. Yes. So that one was important to me. I'm um, not letting it go away. Yay. I, <laughs> I love that. Like I said, that is just such a great encouragement for not just your generation that is very part of the digital age of Mm -hmm. social media and all of these things. And we communicate that way. So it's not like you can really get rid of your phones and there's some really good things you can do with them. So I love that you guys are making that an effort and, um, to just make sure that you are connecting and not getting stuck on them. Okay. My next one is I remember so distinctly growing up, like we would go over to my grandma crackers house all the time, all the time we were there. And every single time my grandpa happy came home, like the first thing he did was like beeline straight to crackers Mm. and he would give her a kiss every (laughs) single time. And like, as a little girl, that was like stuck in my brain. And so that was very important to me. I told this to Matt, like before we were married, when we were going through our marriage counseling, when there was a question of sort of things you expect, you know what I mean? And I told him, I was like, this is number one priority. You kiss me before you leave and you kiss me first thing when you come home. And that's just like something so special to me because I would hope that someday my kids or my grandkids will see that and be like, oh, how special that is a priority. That's something that's small, but is a big deal to me. Yeah. Kath and I do the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, I think and keeping it a habit, like I can say that I, I'm, there might be people who start out that way, but then the life gets busy and you miss it one time and then you miss it another time. And then I've talked to couples who, I mean, they're not even kissing on a regular basis anymore. And that's like the saddest thing in the world. Yeah, honest. Um, and I think making these kinds of things, and I love that you brought that up to him, that you were 
you had that in your head and you communicated that to him. And I think that's really important because I think there's a lot of women who are really disappointed, but they never communicate it, whether in premarital or even in marriage. And even if it's like their social media cell phone thing where you kind of stopped doing it, but you want it again, don't be afraid mm-hmm. to go, Hey, let's start doing let's get this. Back into that. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I don't know if this is always a good thing, but I have no issue being like, um, I don't like this or, Oh, I do like this. I want this. I always awesome. am very clear about that. And sometimes mm-hmm. of course that probably is not fabulous. <laughs> but no, I really am very vocal about things that are important to me, or I really want, I guess. Mm-hmm. So if you ever didn't, I'll be like, wait a minute, where is my kiss? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope people are very comfortable with their spouse so that they could speak up. You know, Maddie's my bestest bestie, you know, yeah. I'm always going to tell him what's up. Yep. <laughs> and it's so sweet because uh, Matt wakes up really early to go to work and I'm normally still asleep. <laughs> and so he wakes me up when he leaves to kiss me. And I always like take that time. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet and special. Even if I'm literally half asleep. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I got my little kiss. And then it's not like I wake up and I'm like, okay, Matt's just gone. Law's telling us this habit at a year and a half. And I'm telling you at 20 years that we've continued that habit. And I'm telling you that it makes a huge difference yeah. in your marriage. And it yeah. and you can continue it. You don't have to stop. There we go. What are you cutting? <laughs> yeah. And I love that. I love that you saw Happy and Crackers doing that. That's just incredibly yeah. special. And, um, and I obviously witnessed that too right. over the years. Um, and I loved their love. They led such a good example with their love. Another habit. This was really important to me specifically. So I got married at 20 and my little brothers were, I want to say 10 and 13. Mm-hmm. So they were still little to me and no one really talks about, I don't know why, but no one talks about how like you could be so excited to get married and you know, it's the right thing to do, but how hard it is to leave your family. Mm -hmm. Like that was really hard for me, especially I'm like very much a daddy's girl. And like, when I thought about not living with my dad, I would just cry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sometimes I would feel guilty because I'm like, okay, I want to marry Matt so bad. And I know this is like, my time and what and it's time for me to get married but thinking about leaving my little brothers and my mommy and daddy like I love Mm -hmm. them so much I love living with them they have been nothing but a blessing for me it just like was so sad to me even though I was so happy and no one talks about that and I don't know why but anyways the habit I wanted to implement in our marriage was especially for my little brothers to still be very involved and still we because when we were dating we took my little brother's out and mm-hmm. did little fun stuff all the time. And I wanted to continue that when we were married, just because they're still, they're still little. Yep. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I don't want them to be like, okay, she got married and then we never saw her. Yep. And that was like really, really important to me. Cause I, of course I just love them. Mm-hmm. They're so sweet and so kind and they're my little brothers. Mm-hmm. And so we make it a priority is to, well, of course we see my family all the time. We still hang out with my family. We do church together. We have family dinners together, mm-hmm. all our birthdays, and we hang out all the time. But even just that special time where we just pick up my little brothers, we take them. We just recently went to the Grand Prix racing and, or like we just took my little brother out for a birthday dinner, just us. It was really important to me and Matt's so sweet and it's now a priority for him Mm -hmm. as well but to just keep that special bond not just with the whole entire family but especially with my little brothers too yep well and that's what so I literally said those exact same words to Kevin I said I don't want my siblings to go we have this big sister but she got married and we never saw her again I literally (laughs) said that same thing and I was the same like very close Dakota especially because he was so little um you know he was eight we got married and and I told Kev the same thing like I want to be very involved and he's the same way like Matt said like Matt is for you and your family where he made that his priority too and you know and my siblings they don't remember and this will probably be a similar thing um, at least with your littlest brother, like my siblings don't remember, even Nan is like, I don't really remember life without Kevin. 
Like, I don't really remember it. Like he's always been there to them. He's their brother, you know? Yeah. So I love that. And I love voicing that. And I think it is interesting that people don't talk about that. I think it's also because it's more and more rare for people to get married young. You, you got married young. I got married young. Um, it's more and more rare for that. So I think that's why it's not talked about a lot, but I do think everybody feels it. And I think it's good that you brought it up because if someone's listening and they're getting married, don't think that just because you feel a little sad about that, that it's not the right time to get married. Exactly. And I, or to feel guilty that you are feeling it like that it isn't right that you're getting married or anything like that. I can tell you 20 years later, making sure we were still in my siblings' lives now that they're almost all married and have kids. Well, we still have such a close relationship and it's so sweet. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that we did that. My next one, we were talking at Chamber about making your home special for your for you and your husband. Of course, it's not just for your husband. You enjoy those things mm-hmm. as well. Yes. So what I do when Matt, if I'm home before. Matt gets home or if I've been home all day because I have his little location I kind of check up on it or if he's telling me he's on his way home I do too I I have the location (laughs) yeah I love the location it's so convenient for this purpose especially before he gets home if I don't already have a candle going or my music going I light a candle I put on our jazz we love jazz as background Mm. is the best yes (laughs) and then I pour him a little glass of juice and water and then Like just, I feel like it's so easy, so simple, Mm -hmm. but when I do that, it literally makes him so happy and like, and Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it made him so happy because when I first started doing it, it was only a few months ago and you know, you'd be like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much, honey. Like, I love it. And I would make him drink his water before he could drink his, (laughs) but he never drinks water. (laughs) You have to drink this water before you can take that (laughs) shit. I would make it a habit. So it felt really so happy when he got home so that he would feel like this was a safe place, a special place where he had his little wife and she was waiting and she was so excited to see Mm. him when he got home. And this was something he would comment on later on too, is I would run to the door when I heard him trying to Mm. unlock it. You know, because we were in a little apartment for so long. Mm. It did not did not take me long to run from one place to another. <laughs> and so I would, once I was hearing him trying to unlock the door, I'd run and I'd open it. I would kiss him and all that kind of stuff. And then later on, when there were days randomly, if I had just gotten home and I didn't get the juice done or a day where I was in the bathroom and I didn't run and open the door <laughs> for him, then he would come and be like, oh my goodness, you didn't come to the door for me or, <laughs> or little things like that. I was like, oh, where's my juice? <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized like, oh, he really does appreciate those That's things. Special. He's noticing, he's noticing when it's not happening. And that makes me realize, okay, it is something special for him when it does happen. When I do come to the door, when he's fiddling with the locker or, <laughs> or when I have at least the tiniest thing, cause juice is literally the easiest thing I poured in a cup and there it is it's like a little yeah. straw and you know, <laughs> but it's, it's the so intention easy. and it's like yeah. the, the, you are preparing for him to come home and you're showing him that you're thinking of him first. Yes. And that he has someone loving him and waiting for him to come home every day. So that's something that's really so simple. So easy saying Alexa, play some jazz and lighting my candle mm-hmm. and pouring a cup of water and juice. It's so easy, but mm-hmm. it's something that really makes him feel so like so loved and so special. And I didn't even know it was so special to him until sometimes I didn't do it. And then he'd be like, Oh, as a wife, when you make those efforts to do things like that for your husband and make him feel special, that returns back to you. Yeah. And I love that. And something that kind of piggybacks that habit is this is also, I feel like low key, just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just a tidy home in general. I'm not Mm. saying everything has to be deep cleaned or everything needs to be spotless, but just nothing on the floors. I keep my, my bathroom, especially if I go into my bathroom and I've left all my products, if I leave it all on the counter, I'm like, Oh, I feel yucky or even just things on the floor in my bedroom. If things are messy and again, mm-hmm. not I'm not one of those people who everything has to be really clean, but mm-hmm. if it's messy, it puts me in a bad headspace or I get overwhelmed or I get cranky in a way 
So I know that I need to be accountable for myself to keep things tidy or else I'm not going to be my best self Mm -hmm. and I notice I'm just happier I'm ready to relax I'm ready to hang out if my space is well kept I feel like that's again kind of common sense but I it just makes for a peaceful home yeah and the world is already so crazy out there and there's so much going on and things are busy and crazy and when you but you have control over your space yeah and so you can you can keep it clean you can run and greet your spouse at the door and, you know, and make them feel special that you have control over. So rather than getting so overwhelmed by everything outside, but just focus on what you can do in your home to make it a sweet and like relaxing space for you and your spouse, I think is so important. It just sets you up for a better atmosphere and better um, fellowship. Okay. He's taking care of the bills. Like he's working hard. I can take care of our sweet little home mm-hmm. and make it special for him. Cause he's been working so hard all day where he doesn't have to work when he's home. And I did for my next ones, I did ask Matt habits he thought were important. My dad even added this into our vows, but cause Matt always thought it was so important to never go to sleep angry. Mm. So that's a really big habit for us. And I feel like it has helped a lot, even if we go to sleep at 3 a.m. <laughs> at least we're not going to sleep at 3 a.m. angry, you know? Yep. <laughs> and especially because Matt has to wake up early for work. If we do go to sleep angry, if it's not a weekend, that means the next day we're also angry mm-hmm. because we don't have time in the morning to talk about it. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so that one's really important to both of us. And I think it really has served us well to like, not just say it because I think it's something we all probably want to say Mm -hmm. we do, but to really implement that in our lives and not, not just brush aside. Oh yeah. Never go to sleep angry, but like really, really make it a priority. doesn't matter what time you go to sleep. Well, and when you're both committing to that, the other thing that happens is you're also committing to a certain measure of humility because you're saying, Hey, we're going to have to drop some things. Yes. One of us at different times is going to have to go, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. Compromise on some things all the time. Um, he also said, we always talk to each other before we make big plans or big purchases. Mm -hmm. That one has helped a lot. (laughs) And that one was one we didn't always do. Like when we first got married, we would make plans all the time. And I, I used to work every other Saturday. So I would just plan on that Saturday. I was off like, okay, that's my mat day. You know what I mean? So, and then sometimes he would have plans. He was like, oh, I'm going to help this guy with his car. And I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) Saturday, like (laughs) That's our day. (laughs) I wasn't telling him, oh, Hey, that's my Saturday off. Don't plan anything. And him not saying when he was planning it to ask me, do we have any plans that day? It was just a miscommunication, but now we've learned from our mistakes. (laughs) (laughs) That's good though. And it's good that you vocalize it. And the purchases thing too is good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's just, it's better. (laughs) Yeah. Matt buys a lot of tools. I bought a lot. I buy a lot of clothes. (laughs) Sometimes it just gets out of control. (laughs) (laughs) The next one, he says, I think we are good at supporting each other in any kind of hobbies we want to try or projects. Mm, That's sweet. We are constantly kind of trying new things. I would say like, whether it's a crafty thing, like I recently, I'm making mugs and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Matt constantly has a a car project or a motorcycle project or an electrical project, or he's always helping someone else with a project. We're always really, really trying to just be supportive, being on each other's side for those kind of things. Because sometimes it could be easy, especially for me to be like, okay, wait, another project wait did we not finish the last one Mm -hmm. (laughs) right and of course there's you know a balance with those kind of things but and I would say that not only that but I what I've seen in you like what I've seen you guys do too not only do you support each other's hobbies and things but you go along with it like you will go with him to you know to a car thing or you know you are making his hobbies as much as you can be part of it. And that's, that's so good. That's so uh, bonding. And there's been so many days where he's at either a friend's car shop or like 
even a friend's house and he's working on a car and I'm off work and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just come. I used to keep a lawn chair in my car because I'd be like, okay, like after work, I'll just sit with you while you finish the car. And sometimes it would literally, they would finish at one in the morning, but I brought my little lawn chair because I would way rather sit in the lawn chair outside in the cold than be home alone sitting waiting. I love that. That's all I have on habits. I know on it's a habit. But... <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, it was I wonderful. Care. I think it's so cool to see your intention, your intentions, both of you. And I think that it's really important to point out to the listeners that these are things that they've communicated about, that they both know that they're that they're doing habit wise. And so that's good. That's important to continue to communicate with each other and be on the same team with your habits. And these are all really good habits. If you, if you are listening to these and you don't do these, I would encourage you to try one of these good habits and see what happens in your marriage when you uh, do it for a little while. Cause I uh, know, I know that you'll be blessed. So what would you say is your top advice that you would give to the listeners Uh, whether they have been married a little while or they're looking to get married or even married for a long time? First things first, I mean, always keep God as your foundation. I feel like when that is first, and me and Matt made that a priority when we were dating before we got married, when Christ is your foundation, everything builds up on that so much stronger. And like you scan everything in the word of God and whenever me and Matt would have kerfuffles, we'd be like, okay, let's take a step back. Let's pray. Let's, Mm. let's look at the word and see, you know, someone might be wrong here. (laughs) or We both are wrong and we just need to relax a little bit. You know what I mean? Just always having that foundation of trust and honesty and just coming to the Lord with everything. I can't tell you how much it's helped us. Like, Mm -hmm. and there were times where we literally had to go back and be like, okay, we need to rebuild our foundation because we, we took it apart a little bit and Mm -hmm we weren't focused on God as much as we should have been. And always going back to that has just, it just makes life so much easier. And in our marriage counseling, they, Aunt Mamie and Uncle Adam talked about um, the triangle and how like, as you get closer to God, you get closer together. And that, Mm -hmm. I really believe that to be true. And I think it's sweet. And then next, I feel like we always kind of put honesty and trust ever since the beginning of dating, like very, very much a priority. And we kind of got a lot of things out of the way. I feel like when we were dating slash engaged, as far as honesty went and just like really dove deep into that while we were dating. And I feel like that also made our marriage a lot smoother. If you're not married yet, I really suggest just being really, really honest because at the end of the day, it's going to come out anyways. <laughs> you might as well be the one to be open and in humility, talk about those things before it becomes an issue or else it will. Well, and that, that cultivates trust later on. So yeah. being honest with each other, especially before you get married, yeah. that gives the your spouse just the benefit of knowing, hey, they told me this really hard thing when we were dating. I can trust them to be honest. Yeah. I love that. Well, this is this conversation has been so sweet and all of your wisdom has just been so encouraging. And I love hearing you talk about it because I've known you forever. And I love, I've loved watching you grow. And I love now seeing you in this stage, seeing you put God at the center of your marriage has just been like a huge blessing to me because I have prayed for you and your future spouse for a lot of years, you know, so I'm, so it's so sweet for me to see this and I love having you on here. And can you tell everybody where they can find and follow you? If there's anybody who has questions, uh, about marriage, maybe directly for you or from your generation. Absolutely. Um, I'm on Instagram. My Instagram is sincerely Angelia. So that is just sincerely. And then Angelia, A N G E L I. A. Awesome. And I'll link that in the show notes too. Perfect. And yeah, I'm I just for the listeners, I just really hope you listen to her wisdom. If you know somebody who is getting married, who is in this age group, like Law said, she's 22, and you are looking for maybe some encouragement from someone who understands their, you know, your own generation. Um, I would really encourage you to share this episode with them because I think that they could be really encouraged. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom and encouragement. I love it. Um, We're going to close with some rapid fire questions. I did also want to say, I don't have any kids. I know sometimes these habits have to change 
when you have That's a good point. You know what I mean? Because I know life is, you've got more people in the house and sometimes things are a little harder, but yeah, I don't have any. And that's my habits as child yeah. marriage. As but if you, right now. <laughs> if you want to hear an interview that talks about how you do what we're talking about with kids, you can listen to the interview I had with Law's mom, Nicole, and uh, she talked a lot. She actually, it wasn't a habits one. It was about covenant marriage and what that means, but it was, but she talked a lot about how she prioritized her marriage yes. with uh, having a house full, house full of babies. Yeah. <laughs> and habits do have to change when you, you bring kids and I know things just have to look, adjust a little bit. So I didn't want to seem, you know, out of reach for those <laughs> you know, who have you know kids. I mean? yeah, good point. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do the rapid fire questions. Okay. What is giving you life right now? Giving me life right now. Biggest thing right now, we just moved. I've said it like five times, but I live so close to my family <laughs> now and I can walk down to my parents' house and I don't know, that's so fun for me. And I live close <laughs> to my grandma. I live close to my sister, Anna. It's just so fun. And I can mm-hmm. go on walks outside. It's just beautiful being in nature and being able to be outside in nature. And I feel like mm-hmm. I missed it living in the city. Like I, like our, cause our first whole year and a half of marriage, we were in the Redlands area and it wasn't, it's just not the same as living in nature. I just, mm-hmm. that's just something that just like brings joy to my little heart. I love it. What about a book or a playlist recommendation? Playlist that I always, always, I mean, me and Matt have wild uh, <laughs> music taste, I would say. But uh, <laughs> the thing that is always very consistent, we love the playlist Coffee Table Jazz hmm. on Spotify. And that okay. is the jazz playlist. I always play, like just in the background, it's just so perfect. Just It's just relaxing and it's beautiful. And, and it's some are a little fun and peppy, but it's just something that doesn't distract you in the background. Yeah. But I think music well. makes a huge difference in, yeah, we play so music cool. all the time. Yeah, we do too. Always, always. And sometimes we'll theme it to what we have going on. I'll play Disney yeah. music before I'm going to Disneyland. I'm getting ready and all that <laughs> stuff. What is your life verse or verse that's speaking to you right now? This is not my life verse, but this is one that I've been just trying to think of recently. It's super short. It's Philippians 1.3. It just says, I thank my God in all my moments of you. Mm. Um, just right now, I'm really trying to focus on just always praying for my people, praying for my husband, praying for my family, praying for my friends, everyone around me. And so I genuinely think that verse is so sweet. Like I think of sweet little Paul right in that (laughs) prison and he's just thinking of his little church and Timothy and all that and I'm just like that is so sweet even in his hardest times he is so thankful when he remembers those people and I just want to whenever I am thinking of anyone in my life I want to just stop right then and there and just give a little prayer for them no matter what so that's just a habit I'm trying to there we go. A habit. It's a habit. I'm trying to put in things. I just really think it's important whenever you have something on your heart to just pray for it right then and there. Just right do it right there and then. there and then. I love that. Yeah. Yay. This is, well, this has been lovely. I am so excited that you're on the show. Thank you so much for being on the show, La. I love you so much. I love you. This is so sweet. Thank you so much. All right, friends, that's it for today. I'm so thankful you joined us and hope it spurs you on to encourage someone else. You can find and interact with me at Real Housewives of the Kingdom on both Instagram and Facebook and my website, marriedrogersneighborhood.com, which is linked in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would really appreciate if you would rate and review the podcast wherever you are listening. Just remember, we are in this together. God loves you and you are not alone. See you next time.